in in Corinth there was this uh, pagan festivals where women deities were worshipped. Women deities were worshipped, and women stood in the front and chanted a lot of things. So they were the center. So once they accepted the Lord and came to Jesus, they almost continued the same level there. You know, they forgot to give the men their respect. And, married, and, and the veil was a sign of marriage also. So they would go into that uh, spirit move, spirit move, probably spirit move. They used to compete with one another for telling in tongues. So if when somebody comes in, a, in a, as a new person, as a newcomer, what they, they will be utterly confused of what's happening. And Paul then said, hey, let's bring some order here. You please keep quiet for some time. Then, then we can work. But Paul always encouraged women to stand in the front, to preach, to... To, to, to lead things. Uh, and always also women should come under the authority of a man. That also was clear. So whenever a woman comes and ministers, he should not have that independent spirit. Say independent spirit. So you should have that covering. Now, if a woman doesn't have a man as his head, Jesus is her head. So that covering you should have. And that is shown by the veil. Veil that time. These days, should the veil be applicable uh, well, it's good, I would say. It's, it, it shows that you are independent. But if you do not put a veil also, God is not going to punish you. A, so that is the contextual implementation. And when we understand the word of God in its context, a lot of understanding changes. And we, we you know, we, we come to the Lord. In fact, if you go to the Middle East countries and all, you can see the barka. So they, they cover their heads all the time, not just coming inside. So it was a contextual thing in the Middle East. That's what's happening. And uh, these days, people twist and all, all those things. But today, I want to talk to you about a family who was in the background scene. Everybody say background. And homes are supposed to be the centers of revival. Centers of We all want revival. Revival means new life. God has a plan behind a home. And uh, uh, this couple was in the background and was the key for revival through the towns, through the cities. We may not have heard much about them like Paul or Thomas or Apollos or anybody like, but they were very effective. Now let me tell you, your house or your home is a key for God's move in your city. Your house or your home is the key for God's move in your city. Everybody say, my house or my home is the key for God's move in this city. In this city. Wherever God's, God places you. Many people think, Pastor, I want to earn well, get a good uh, salary, have uh, two, three, sixty, forties, and then build bungalows. You are only six inch. For you, how much? Three, sixty, forty, and everything. After that, what? Is life that much? No. God has called you to be a blessing to the nations. Hallelujah. Say blessing to the nations. One day, the Lord's work is happening. Hallelujah. So, it just takes one yielded heart to be a blessing. We all ask the Lord, Lord, bless me, bless me. For what? Hallelujah. From your midst, blessing should God. When is the last time you prayed, Lord, make me a blessing? That changes that changes the perspective. Our prayers must change from Lord bless me to Lord make me a blessing. That's when you get the ministry. That's when your life has a purpose. That's when your life will echo with God's love. So your house, and let me tell you, your house life is reflected in the way you conduct yourself in the worship service. What's that? Your house life is reflected in the way you come and sit here. If you are coming late, I know that you are late everywhere. You don't understand. Understood? If you have some problem in, in singing songs, I know that you are not singing songs at? Because if you sing at home, you will sing at the? If you are not here for the prayer, what will I understand? Because he who is passionate for prayer at home will be passionate prayer in the? So don't deceive anybody. That's the, but if your house is full of revival, you will spread that revival here and through the communities. If, you are, if your house has a Bible study and you spend time to learn God's word, you will definitely, because 
word of god is very powerful say powerful it's the most powerful thing the greatest important thing is the word of god coming from heaven to the earth that is the biggest thing that happened on life hallelujah amen so uh your home life is reflected in your worship in your service you are you are eager to volunteer you are eager to serve the lord and that's how god will help you and today i want you to come to acts chapter 18 acts chapter 18 just for a small time you have come anyway we have to meditate some time i'll just talk to you from this wonderful chapter acts chapter 18 acts 18 and we will read from uh, can we read it together if you don't mind can we all rise up together for the reading of god's word acts chapter 18 1 to 11 acts chapter 18 1 to 11 hallelujah praise the lord if you take if you have taken the word just say amen acts 18 1 to 11 after this paul left athens and went to corinth can we read it together there he met a jew named aquila a native of pontus who had recently come from italy with his wife priscilla because claudius had ordered all jews to leave rome paul went to see them and because he was a tent maker as they were he stayed and worked with them every sabbath he reasoned in the synagogue trying to persuade jews and greeks when silas and timothy came from macedonia paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching testifying to the jews that jesus was the messiah but when they opposed paul became and became uh, post paul and became abusive he shook out of his uh, clothes in protest and said to them your blood be on your own heads i am innocent of it from now on i will go to the gentiles then paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of titius justus a worshipper of god crispus the synagogue leader and his entire household believed in the lord and many of the corinthians who heard paul believed and were baptized one night the lord spoke to paul in a vision do not be afraid keep on speaking do not be silent for i am with you and no one is going to attack and harm you because i have many people in the city so paul stayed in corinth for a year and a half teaching them the word of god this is the word of god may the lord add his richest blessings to the ministering of god's word amen you may be seated so uh there is a map there brother on the tab can you just put that across um viz.com i just wanted to there were three missionary journeys of paul how many three missionary journeys and uh the the viz map here yeah that put the second missionary so this is the second missionary journey of paul he started from antioch and he comes through down here there there be a iconium this is the first missionary journey he went all here this is the second missionary journey which is from ad 49 to 51 what is that ad 49 to 51 he goes from uh, these places are almost all of them are in turkey now modern day turkey uh, they comes to macedonia that is philippi macedonia he comes down can you enlarge it yeah he comes to uh, yeah philip uh, so in the second missionary journey paul touches uh, berea thessalonica amphipolis come down and uh, comes to athens and we start chapter 18 from acts chapter 18 is from when he moved from athens to corinth and athens was a greek city greek city full of philosophy full of philosophy they were all this really if they go out for tea they will talk what philosophy what is life what is life and matter and all this so uh, who were the greek philosophers aristotle and plato yeah plato no plato they what no anti plato socrates yeah aristotle socrates plato all of the all of these guys so they were all influenced by the greek civilization see greek civilization was so influenced that it it, it has got on to your beds also because all of your beds are having the greek civilization they were like that go and have a look at it our months january february march all greek gods mercury venus earth you all of them they are all gods all planets are named after their gods greek gods so greek influence was big english tried to put it all and uh, they put it all uh, english now uh, england england was a big empire british empire and all of them want to 
impose their religion, their ideas. So Greek in Athens, now these gods were all like, you know, you have to sacrifice, you have to do so much of things to please God. And if you are in something, they will destroy you. That were the kinds of gods they, they followed. And here was one man coming and telling amongst them, hey, no, my God is a suffering God. He suffered when he came and died on the cross. And with him, there is forgiveness. It was a new message for him. It was a new message that people all started jeering him. They made fun of him. And Athens was like a, a very bad uh, uh, episode for Paul because many didn't accept. Some people accepted just one prominent, some ladies accepted, but not much, not the big revival he thought. So with all that apprehensions, with all that uh, dilemma, he comes to Corinth. Now Corinth is not a Greek city, it's a, a trade city. It's a trade city, it was a port city. Many ships used to come, a lot of trade used to happen. And it was a city known for prostitution. All these uh, sailors, you know, they will be months away from home. So they will like how the highway and all that. So like that in those days, it was the port city. So these uh, sailors used to come and, you know, that city was known for what? Prostitution. Women were, uh, uh, you know, uh, selling their bodies much, much, pretty much that sort of city. And here is Paul going with the good news. Say good news. Good news about a God who forgives. Now who can get that message? Who will get that message? When you're telling about many offerings and sacrifice, pleasing themselves, God, Paul is telling, hey, God has done everything. He loves you. He suffered for you. And in that time, Roman emperor was called as God. And the uh, Roman emperor called Augustus claimed himself that he was the son of God. So when Paul is telling that I, the son of God loved me and gave his life for me in Galatians, you should understand that context. He is the son of God. Who? Not Augustus. It's Jesus who is the son of God. Now he required guts to say that. It's not simple. He was going with a revolutionary message. And here he was in Corinth fully upset probably because of all the discouragements he had in Athens. And he comes to a tent. He knew how to make tents. Say tents. That was a good market trade. That You need money, you make tents good. So he was a good tent maker. So here he's coming to one couple. From the outside he could understand that they are also Jews. You know, Jews have their look. Correct? You have seen, Jews have their look. They have the talit hanging. They have the cap, black cap. They have the, the, the little bit of bed here and there. And you know, you, you can make out from who, who are Jews. But you cannot make who is a Christian. They'll be anywhere, you know. You don't understand. Okay, may God give you enlightenment. Now, Jews made it sure that they would make themselves to reveal themselves with their faith. And here was Paul coming and they saw outside. Their name was Priscilla and Aquila. They had tent making business. And Paul said, I also want to join your trade. Now, who Priscilla and Aquila was? 18.1. Chapter 18.1. Because of an edict of Claudius, Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome because of some problem. Anti-Semitism was there then and today also. There's a big attack against the Jews. But now uh, Claudius ordered them to leave Rome for some situation, for front circumstance. And uh, here was, uh, you know, how, how easy it is to migrate. Uh, going and migrating somewhere is not easy. And because of the Claudius order, Aquila and Priscilla, both of them are coming to Corinth. Now, if you look at the uh, map there, can you say from where they went? Verse 2, 18 to there he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus. There's a place called Pontus who recently come from Italy. So from Pontus, they le were left to Italy or Rome. From Rome, they are coming now to Corinth. So already two migrations. And now they are probably these two people. But uh, we do not know when they were saved. But they were longing in their heart for a revival. They were longing, burning in their heart for some word of God. In the city filled with prostitution. In the city filled with unwanted culture. In the city filled with filth. They were longing for some word. And here comes the man himself. Who? Do you have a job for me? I feel at that moment their hearts must have met together. Because Christ in both of their hearts met. Hallelujah. There was a love eruption in both of their hearts. And the Bible says they didn't say Paul to vacate. What happened there? 
verse 3 because he was a tent maker he stayed and worked with them wow paul stayed and worked with this wonderful couple so that tent making business so mornings they used to work they would waste for sabbath because jews were their first target because to say something they are the because they have the torah whatever said in torah is revealed in jesus how many commands they have how many jewish commands 613 613 that much commands there are commandments the jewish torah has 613 commandments and uh, paul and all these jewish people know all those things and to tell that jesus is from that commandments it makes easy and sense now i was thinking about this jesus just came you are to see that nazareth small town smallest of towns bethlehem smallest of towns in that he just went like very quick how how long three and a half years i'm looking at my i'm trying to tell you is time is flying and jesus just showed for how many years three and a half years just pat, pat, pat. he healed the sick he went on the cross died and went and gave all the responsibility to us hallelujah so like that uh, aquila and priscilla they they take paul with them and starts the move of god in their house amen and we read in the synagogue one day it became very hard uh, in verse 7 it says then paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of titus a worshiper of god many believed and that night god said to him do not be afraid keep on speaking do not be silent what's that do not be silent a christian ought not to be silent pastor silence is golden that is out in, uh, not for a christian you should keep talking say keep talking talking not to other things talk about jesus do not be silent this is not the time to be silent because one time you will be silent even if everybody comes at it please talk pa you will not talk correct we all go to the realm of silence this is the time to work this is the time to act this is the time to use everything possible and revolutionize the world amen you know what people seeking fame let me tell you one thing you cannot become famous without compromising and if you are compromising you are in it so it's always good to be famous for the lord hallelujah be a good word champion knowledge of god's word and all those things so this couple aquila and priscilla were so much diligent and that night god spoke to paul in a vision in aquila and priscilla's tent does visions come in your house does visions come pastor i have a television 15 inch I'm not talking about that television. Divine vision. Hallelujah. Divine vision. God's oh, heavens are already opened. When is the last time you got a divine inspiration to get up and pray, to pray for something, to do something in the name of Jesus? That's what I call about vision. And Paul was quite discouraged. He said, "Do not be upset. There are many more." And uh, in Tamil, I think in uh, in any other version it says in verse 5, Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia. Paul got even more strengthened. say paul got even more strengthened because these two guys were also bachelors probably so he had that you know paul was not married many people say he was not married uh, so if at all people are not getting married also it's okay after marriage only i understood this if you want to remain unmarried and serve the lord do it but it is better to be uh, unmarried and passionate for the lord than married and silent i knew that i knew this only after now all of you who are not married you got it so choice is towards you hallelujah amen may you all have a good family and for a hallelujah but marriage is not everything because god has sent his son to die for us on the cross if you are married don't be carried you carry them <laughs> some people after marriage no address no uh, Aquila and Priscilla were so united that they 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 just gave their house they did trade together and the bible says uh, how many of you are hearing this for the first time come on you all are hearing for the first time. aquila priscilla even lord is the shepherd you will hear about this is a new thing acts 18 i know you will not have even entered this page okay now after this vision paul god is telling no one is going to attack and harm you because i have many people in the city 
Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say, God has many people in this city. God has many people in this city. Till they are one, God is not going to take you out of the city. I am in the city for those people. Hallelujah. Hey, I, I have it all. I don't need to come here and uh, tell, hey, come. And, no, but we have people here to be one. That's why we are here. That's why we are traveling cities. That's why we are doing everything that is possible. Hallelujah. To win people for the Lord Jesus. Amen. That gives you a purpose. Hey, with anything else don't, doesn't satisfy you. Nothing else will satisfy you. Once you... Now these people were doing tent making and waiting for the Sabbath to go and reason and argue with the Jews so that Jesus would be revealed. Okay? Now... Uh, I just want to take you to five or six qualities of Aquila and Priscilla and help you to understand that homes are the centers of revival. If you have a place to stay, that place is chosen by God. Amen? For a revival. For a revival. Number one, they were resilient through challenges in life. What's that? Resilient. You learn a new word today if you do not know. What's that? Resilient. Resilient means not giving up. They were resilient through challenges. They were not, uh, as they moved from Pontus to Italy and from Italy to Corinth, they were, their fire was keeping on increasing. Say increasing. Increasing passion. I pray that all of you will have an increased passion. Hallelujah. Through life's situations. They were resilient. They didn't give up. I still remember when I came across this word resilient for the first time, I went and put I thought, okay, I should write this word even if no word is there in my English paper. So I was waiting for a chance to write and I wrote resilient and I underlined it with two, three. Uh, and my ma'am was impressed. Hey, from where you got this word, she asked. Yeah, we are talking about you. So resilience means you are strong in midst of challenges. Hey, life is not free from challenges. Through challenges, see God. That's the purpose of life. Through situations, see God. Through your challenges, Make sure that you work for God. So now if you see from Pontus, they come to Rome, from Corinth, and you can see now in verse 18, Acts 18 and verse 18, Paul stayed on Corinth for some time. Where did he see? Obviously. In Aquila and Priscilla's house. If I come, I'm going to come, and I'm going to stay. One month, <clears throat> pastor, other house is there. You have no. No, generally the trend is that now. Let's be frank. When are you going? You, your parents are calling you or your brothers or sisters are there. A no, that's how we get dramatic in scheming things, you know. To See, don't scheme things when the word of God comes to you. When there is ministry of God's word, take it importantly. Hallelujah. So Aquila, Priscilla didn't have twice the thing to put Paul in. What a blessing, no? To put that man, Paul. And Paul was not like you and me. He liked getting hitted. If he gets one hit and some blood comes, he will be like, aha. I am completing what Jesus suffered on the cross. So even if you say, hey, keep quiet, man, you cannot stop him. He is that uh, revolutionary. Say revolutionary. Once Jesus comes to your life, you cannot be silent. So either your silence is because Jesus is not there, or you have not understood him in a way you have to understand. Because once Jesus comes, a revelation comes. Hallelujah. A revolution comes. Say a revolution. How many of you know about the French revolution? The, when people took uh, the democracy and you know all those things. Now if you look at 18, Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria. Accompanied by? Aha. Uh -huh. What is this? They didn't look off. When I can leave pastor and go. Did they look? What did they look? They were saying, you are going to, you are going to Syria. We are coming to you. We don't mind closing the trade. Say closing the trade. We don't mind closing the trade. The work of God is important. Because Priscilla must have understood this. I, this is just my opinion. Paul, if he is like this, he will lose his life early. Because he likes this hitting and beating. No. Even you put him uh, in one, at one point in first missionary journey, he was in Lystra, and uh, they they put him to death. They thought that he's dead. Suddenly, life came in him, <laughs> and probably Timothy saw him in the first missionary journey in Lystra, 
the bleeding face of paul and that's how he became his son son in faith so paul if he is not eating he will not eat eating is not big thing say eating is not big deal all of the life when jesus comes it turns around and i want to tell you all of you who are working you're working for god don't trade ministry for work do the work for the ministry somebody said amen monday to saturday i work why so that the sunday is coming say sunday is coming yeah. hallelujah that's the day where we want to catch souls sat from monday to saturday we are in the workplace we had this calling and uh, still by god's grace we had this uh, thing in our heart and now uh, so influ- wherever you are that's where people are your home your office that's where people are so god has put you there so that jesus inside of you will be revealed outside amen through your talk through your work through everything now uh, aquila and priscilla didn't leave him he went with them they went they went so uh, first, first they were resilient through challenges in life second they had a resolve say resolve resolve to stand for god and his servants they stood for god and his servants they stood for missions they stood for i i am here because of my my house loud hosting men of god those days people used to come also these days all of them are in the car nobody will come also those days the bus area no, after all the bus i still remember one old man of god coming white and white his white his dress will be old and old uh, pastor white and white but after he comes from trivandrum to our place it will be like uh, black you know because of all the smoke and other things my mother used to take his clothes wash it and give it to him we used to do that people used to come and stay in our homes there used to be meetings and it used to be our house used to be a place of visitors men of god and prayer and thanksgiving and wow it was a different environment now now it's all gone you know it's all going in kerala also everybody has got that's why i said sophistication brings suffocation or who gave you the work now you are telling that as an excuse for not coming to the see where we have gone so this is the issue let not the blessings keep you from the from the house of god let the blessings bring you to the house of god some people after they get to their children they will say pastor child will cry in the church and then what child will laugh in church i tell them bring the children let them grow let them know the word of god no they will some people will touch you know they will touch and you know they will have unwanted hands they without that your child will go to if it is in the church it will grow under the healing of god that's what i believe hallelujah amen they had a resolve to stand i want all of you to make this commitment pastor if i have a family i will stand for the work of god and i will stand for god and his servants that should be your resolve take a resolve say resolve resolve is a resolution that you take in your heart and now from corinth they move to ephesus now let's come to uh, 23 24 very quickly uh, finish 1230 sharp i'll finish after spending some time in antioch paul set out from there and traveled from place to place throughout the region of galatia say paul cannot be tied he came to antioch he went to Phil- galatia for just strengthening all the disciples and 24 verses meanwhile a jew named apollos a native of alexandria came to ephesus he was a learned man with thorough knowledge of the scriptures say thorough knowledge he had been instructed in the way of the lord he spoke with great fervor fervor means boiling fervor means what boil <laughs> say boil he spoke with great fervor so now apollos is in corinth a new man comes in the picture his name is apollos and where is he in where is he ephesus ephesus he is in ephesus and uh, now who is there in ephesus aquila and priscilla is there paul already left he is uh, he made some work there and he, and he already went for strengthening business now aquila and priscilla are there suddenly there is a guest speaker in their synagogue his name is apollos he was well learned in the scriptures he knew a bit about jesus bit and parcel about jesus and but he spoke with so much of fire say fire ah he knew it. but apollos uh, aquila priscilla knew that there is something that is missing what did they do look at verse 26 of 18 he began to speak boldly in the synagogue when priscilla and aquila heard him they 
invited him to their home and explained to him the word of God more adequately. Wow. Look at what's happening. Aquila and Priscilla were more learned in God's word. Imagine Paul is there. <laughs> when Paul said this there, would you lack anything? So they knew that Apollos, little more tuning, he will be on fire. So he called them and they taught him the word of God. And Apollos got strengthened even more. And he went back to Corinth and did a big work there. And in Corinth, in, in 1 Corinthians we read, I planted, Apollos watered, God gave the growth. But behind two great men of God, one family is standing. Who is that? Aquila and Priscilla. They had a resolve to stand for the men of God. They had a resolve to stand for God. They, the third thing which I want to tell you is they took responsibility. Say responsibility. To nurture gifts. I want you to write it down. The, to nurture gifts. Now Apollos was a gift to the church. They wanted to nurture it. They wanted to make it more brighter. Teach and transmit the right word. Not any word. They wanted to give the right word. Now, does your house have a library? If it's not there, get at least 500 books. How much? Let, keep that as a target. In midst of your flat screen. Flat screen will make you flat. Everything is there in the name only. Flat screen will make you? Smartphone will make you? smartphone will make you dumb. So read God's word. Understand God's word. So Paul, Apollo, uh, Aquila and Priscilla were so trained in God's word that they, that they raised up Apollos in their house. Hallelujah. I pray that your children will be mighty in the Lord. That's the important. We, we do not lose anything by, 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 by the subtraction of one engineer or a doctor. But we lose a great deal by the lack of a servant of God. And I pray that all of our children will take up the Bible and preach. That's my passion. The village needs you. Nobody else. If you are going outside, who will tell to the village? Have a mentality for the village. Hallelujah. Somebody said amen. All right. So, uh, responsibility to nurture gives teach and transmit the right word. Right word. So he taught the right word. Aquila and Priscilla made their efforts and Apollos was raised in their house. Hallelujah. And uh, now to be clear, the first epistle which Paul wrote was the epistle of Thessalonica. Okay. And where did he write it from? From the tent of Aquila and Priscilla. Hallelujah. So that was a writing environment. Say writing environment. All of you should write. Write makes you a perfect man. Where is the blog? Writing gives you clarity of thought. God said, do it as a... Tell me. Paul had a team. Say team. <laughs> Silas is there. Timothy is there. Aquila is there. DIY. Uh, do it as a team. And uh, Paul is now transmitting God's word. And in that tent... They got all the vision, writing, everything is happening. Imagine this in your house. When we come to your house, instead of television, vision should be there. Instead of air condition, gospel condition should be there. There should be discipline, there should be order. And God's, God's work will be done. So what a beautiful tent it is. Fifthly, they had a revolutionary mindset. Say revolutionary mindset. These are important words. Revolutionary I cannot be silent. If I am there, I will change the place. That should be the idea. So Aquila and Priscilla did not give comfort a big thing. They said, wherever I go, we will create a revolution. Hallelujah. They had a revolutionary mindset. Why? Jesus is there. Jesus, the Lord of Lords is with them. They had a revolutionary mindset. Why? Because for the 1 Corinthians 16, 19. Can we just read that? 1 Corinthians 16, 19. I'm almost done. So, uh, they were a revolution. First Corinthians 16, 19. Let's read that. The churches in province of a Asia sends you greetings. Aquila and Priscilla greet you warmly in the Lord. And so does the church that meets at there. Look at that church that meets where? In their house. Wow. This is what Aquila and Priscilla are. They are church, church people. They, wherever they go, they will plant a church. What is planting a church? Not setting a big facility, you know, they will find two, three people who know the Lord and love, worship God with them and they will work for the expansion of the gospel. 
that is what i'm talking about as a revolutionary mindset so in corinth they planted the church in ephesus they planted the church in rome they planted the church wherever they went they planted the church hallelujah i pray that all of us will have this church mentality not telling that i am a pastor and all no 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 you find out two three people in your community and be the community and the body of christ in that area god will use you to transform that area amen hallelujah that's how churches this is just a gathering say gathering you are the church this is the gathering we train you we equip you you go outside and transform the world say transform the world i'm not even seeing you brother in the street always sitting and sleeping in the mattress means what you cannot transform so do the things which you can they were relentless in their love and loyalty right this one, this word relentless bds will get extra point relentless in their love and loyalty relentless means uh, you cannot stop them from loving you cannot stop them you cannot keep them back look at romans 16 and verse 3 greet priscilla are you there romans 16 3 greet priscilla and aquila my co-workers in what is that paul is telling priscilla and aquila my co-workers how many of you can say that you are my co-worker you should be co-worker means what you can be my co-worker only when you do more than what i do now you tell me how many co-workers because gospel is our passion doing more we have 120 people in our church facebook we have the glow today at least 120 people take it and share it how many people will see it that's it our have that uh, mentality anyway uh, it's not about people i believe in two or three as long as god gives one or two here we will still keep planting churches amen praise the lord god brought us here in 2008 we planted a church here each one of us should have that responsibility to gather the body of christ and move forward so in 16 and verse 3 we read greet priscilla and aquila my co-workers in christ verse 4 they risk their lives for me in in other translation it said they they gave their neck for me they gave up their neck for me what's that aquila and priscilla they i hope there was a problem in ephesus and there was a big problem and paul will never keep quiet he will come out and they will say please you be there otherwise if you are lost all these things are lost so aquila and priscilla laid down their neck for this wonderful man of god laid down their necks wow what love so they were relentless in their love and loyalty finally they reflected the life of christ they reflected the life of christ aquila and priscilla comes together in the bible together they together say together see many these days we see many divorces we see husbands and wives not coming in the same vision i pray that all of our houses if the husband is not with you the husband will come and be with the same vision together you will serve the lord amen probably your husband is not with you probably something has happened but you have a child you have together you together can become that home that hosts the presence of god and can do great things because god is looking at your house for a revival amen praise the lord hallelujah aquila and priscilla reflected the life of christ and in this uh, thing let me tell you uh, around six times aquila and priscilla comes in the bible three times it it is priscilla and aquila means priscilla a little overtook aquila probably thank god for the women in our church somebody said amen yeah because if they were not their ministry would have gone yeah yeah i'm i'm, I'm frank i'm frank they have the passion they have the encouragement and they do a lot of things and especially in our church we have a lot of opportunities sunday school all women i am thinking when will all men come in <laughs> the first hub meeting women started it i just told the vision women took it up and a uh, lot of things women are doing in our church and i'm thankful for the godly women and uh, i pray that together see jesus always bring things together say together when the husband is in the in the church for cleaning the wife also should come correct or no that is what aquila and priscilla shows us when the husband is doing something let the wife pray let them be together in the house of god and the lord will do great things and it seems the great fire the great fire in rome there was a great fire it happened in july 19 when was july 19 yesterday day before yesterday 
and because of that nero blamed aquila and priscilla and they and he killed them but before that paul died and paul's last words is say in second second timothy 419 now these are paul's final words paul's final verses before he he's being killed second timothy 419 it says greet priscilla and aquila so there also paul's from paul's mind who is coming priscilla priscilla was little more diligent in taking care of paul's affairs praise the lord somebody say amen god gives a great importance to women women has a great role to do in the work of god do not think that women are second grade in christianity no they occupy a primus position in the kingdom expansion not only women families together aquila and priscilla together they did a big big work now do you understand where where all they went from from they planted the church in corinth they planted the church in athen in in ephesus they planted a church in rome and before paul's head is being cut he's thinking greet priscilla and aquila may the lord make us as families of his love shall we all rise up to our feet and if you say lord jesus i want to be a key for my revival in my community i want to seek his face lord i want to have a family like aquila and priscilla just talk to the lord and say you may not have a family today but say lord if you give me a family it will be like aquila and priscilla me and my child me and my husband and children whatever situation you are in say lord use my house for your revival let there be visions let there be dreams let there be the word of god let the servants of god come let the messengers of god come let the angels of god come let every demonic spirits leave i see somebody with a neck issue the lord wants to touch you if you just open up the lord is ready to heal you will you just open up in the name of jesus every respiratory problems i rebuke in the name of jesus let there be healing today under the authority of god's word i say you have a calling you have a plan and purpose no no more husband and wife will be divided god is bringing situations that you will be together and you will work for the kingdom of god if you believe god is ready to do that hallelujah lord jesus as your servant i speak revival into our homes that we will be relentless that we will be responsible in teaching that we will have a resolve to stand by god that we will reflect the life of christ hallelujah Oh we thank you we thank you give us that love give us that love give us that love oh god give us that love if your family is without love just say lord give us that love give us that love that we will give it all for a revival to see many people coming to the lord jesus the true life hallelujah